All right. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Hi-Fi Man Aria Organic. <laughs> that made me nervous. Now, for those who are unaware of what this is, it's a headphone. <laughs> it's an over-ear open back planar magnetic headphone. And these use some of the largest drivers that you'll find in any headphone, period. And this one is the Organic. And I have some things to say. Things. Things indeed. All right, let's take a look. All right, so as we get going here, the usual disclaimer applies. I've not been paid to say anything in particular about this headphone and all thoughts and opinions here are my own. Uh, for reference, this unit came up from the headphones.com store. We just brought it in for review, along with uh, the Aria Stealth, which is behind me on the rig here, and I've been comparing them side by side. Now, the one thing that I haven't been able to do that everybody is wanting to know the answer to, and unfortunately, I'm not going to give it to you today, is how does the Aria Organic stack up to the HE1000 V2 Stealth? But that's going to be for another video, and I'm already getting ahead of myself. What is the Aria Organic? This is the latest in the various different revisions of the Hi-Fi Man egg-shaped headphones, uh, in particular the Aria platform. Uh, the Aria has gone through a number of revisions. I think this is now like V4 or V5. But the key differentiator between this one and the other Arias visually is that this one uses this wood color. And I have to say that ordinarily I'm not a fan of the way that Hi-Fi Man does the wood on their headphones. I wasn't a fan of it on the Susvara that much. I wasn't a fan of it on the HE1000 series. Uh, but I think on this one it actually does look a lot better. Black, it kind of looks better than the silver on the wood color. So I think this looks really, really nice. I, I like the way that it, this looks. I mean, it's still a kind of crazy, ridiculous looking headphone, right? It's with the massive cups, um, but at the same time, I think it looks pretty cool. This is the cable that it comes with, and it is not particularly great in typical Hi-Fi Man fashion. However, they have improved their cables over the years, but it is a little bit shorter than what I was hoping for with this type of headphone. Uh, still, uh, I, it does the job. The cable termination is 6.35 millimeters, uh, or quarter inch, and the entry points are 3.5 millimeter. So, uh, there's that. Now, there is a ton of confusion when it comes to the Hi-Fi Man revisions that have come out. Which ones use the stealth magnets, what do the stealth magnets do, uh, and what are the diaphragms, etc. Um, so let me just be clear here, this does use the stealth magnets, it says it on the box, and it does also have what they call nanometer thickness diaphragm. For impedance and sensitivity, this is both low impedance and high sensitivity, or reasonably high sensitivity. It's not that high, but it is relatively easy to drive. You should be able to drive it from most equipment. And for its mechanical design, it is effectively the same as what you find on all the other Aria revisions and the other egg-shaped hi Man headphones like the HE1000 series. It is different and importantly better than what you get on the Ananda series that doesn't have cup swivel. And it is also better than the Edition XS because this headband is much better than that sort of rickety uh, headband style that you get on the Edition XS and some of those other ones. When I put it on, here's what it looks like. All right, as usual, it doesn't really improve much going on here, but I find it to be very comfortable. Uh, it's lightweight again, doesn't clamp too hard, and the cup swivel makes it very accommodating. One thing to note is that when you change the clicks here on the headband, it does have a tendency to scratch the inside. It's not that bad, it's not that noticeable, but you do still see it, so there's that. Uh, this is a normal, this is normal behavior for these headbands, and I think that's something that people don't really like. Um, but for the cups, I mean, th this is, this is enormous, right? Like, take a look at this. Massive, massive openings. And this is good, but also for certain people, depending on your head shape, uh, it may hang down below your jaw and cause the seal to break. Now, incidentally, that's actually okay with this headphone. All that that does is it boosts the bass a little bit when the seal is imperfect. Like even for me, if I have it on some of the higher clicks up here, this extends down below, uh, you know, where the coupling would be on the side of my head. So it does cause a little bit of seal break and that does incur the resonance frequency and it boosts the bass. But that's basically it for the non-sound related stuff here. Let's now talk about the sound quality. And just before I do that, there is one thing that you guys should be aware of. And it is that the happiness and joy that I experience on a day-to-day -day basis is directly proportional to whether or not you subscribe. And I regularly get comments saying, well, why don't you smile more? Well, that's why. That's why. So I'll make you a deal. If you subscribe, I will smile a genuine smile. Right now, here's where we're at.
and I'm hopeful that that'll improve in the upcoming videos. But okay, enough of that. Let's get into the sound quality with the Aria Organic. The Aria Organic, or I'm going to take it off my head. <laughs> the Aria Organic is very similar to the other Aria, so the Aria Stealth. There are some subtle differences here, and so let's talk about the measurements first. When it comes to the measurements, uh, I'm going to show you guys here both on the BNK528 and on the Gross system. There is something very clever going on with this headphone that I want to highlight. You'll notice that in the base, it, it actually kind of looks like there's a base shelf. And you do hear this as well. So the base is a little bit prominent in the sub base, or it's like slightly elevated there compared to just linear flat base extension that you often find with these types of headphones. And ordinarily, that's not something you can really do that easily with, you know, front sealed planar magnetic open back headphones like these, unless you do some sort of integrated leak like what they did with the Sundara, which is also very clever. And I did a video on that if you want to check that out. Uh, or if you add some sort of electrical filter, some sort of analog filter in there. And it doesn't seem like they've done either of those things with this headphone. Because if you check the impedance measurement on this, it, it's actually pretty flat there. There's nothing, I mean, it's not perfectly flat, but it is it is within the realm of, you know, flat impedance or linear impedance. So... Uh, when I first saw this, I was very confused. I thought, how did they get a base shelf in here? What's likely going on here is that this dip and then shelf feature that you kind of see in the base, that's likely to be down to a driver mode. So ordinarily, when you look at these headphones and the way they measure, there's often some wibbles there in the mid-range, right? These slight jagged features going on in the mids. But what's going on here is one in the base instead of in the mid-range. And I think that's pretty cool. The, the other side to this is that Overall, this isn't actually a bass boosted headphone. The bass is good. It's actually very good. Um, it is just slightly contoured as a result of what appears to be a driver mode. For the rest of the frequency response for the Aria Organic, it's actually excellent throughout the mid-range. There's a little bit of a dip there in the mids that you commonly see with hi-fi main headphones. It's not as extreme or strong as what you find in many of the other ones. It's a bit more of a subtle dip in the mids. And this does, again, create the effect of, you know, spaciousness. It, it, it's a spaciousness enhancing effect. And then for the upper mids and for what we call here the strongest part of the ear gain, um, it's not too much. It's not too forward. It is just a little bit forward there. And I do think this is one area where uh, the Aria Organic improves a bit on some of the lower end ones like the Ananda. However, where things get into trouble with the Aria Organic is that the treble is just bright. It's just a treble boosted headphone. There's, there are no two ways about it. And if you are treble sensitive, this is going to come across as sibilant. And so right away, if you're treble sensitive, if you, if you find a little bit too much treble to be fatiguing, I, I don't recommend looking at this one. What you're seeing there is a peak at around eight kilohertz. That could just be the canal entrance resonance and constructive interference going on there and not something you need to worry too much about. But at the same time, there are still a couple of peaks in there, like at around 6.5K or 6.6K. And then also in the upper treble as well, it's, it's quite elevated there at around 13K. Um, so it, it causes this extra airiness and openness, but at the same time, it causes some sibilance, I find at least when listening to vocal tracks. I don't find it difficult to EQ though. Like you can get a little bit more fine grained if you want, but you can also just downshelf the treble and it's one filter and that's probably all you need to do. When comparing it against the Aria Stealth, I actually find that I prefer the Aria Stealth without EQ because the Aria Stealth is just not as bright. And it's interesting because the Aria Organic has that bass feature, but the overall distance between bass and treble, it's not like that makes the treble any less forward, if that makes sense. So when I compare the two, the Aria Organic and the Aria Stealth, you can see here this is compensated uh, to diffuse field and then represented as a tilt. Uh, I'll do a video on why this is the way that we're representing it in the future. But at the moment, just take a look at how this is, how these two compare. And this is based on the averages between left and right for both of them. So these differences should be fairly consistent. Obviously unit variation is a thing, but um, this is less likely to be down to positional variation. And you can see that the Aria Organic is just a little bit brighter in the treble. Uh, and with EQ, I think they're both very competitive. And I do think that that bass feature is really cool on the Aria Organic. Now, how does this sound subjectively? Let's talk about the experience of it. And once again here, this is just the description of the experience. I'm not referring to any physical acoustic properties when I'm talking about this. I'm just talking about how this sounds to me. And the Aria Organic to me sounds mostly good. It sounds very spacious and very open and airy. 
I do not find this to be more detailed or more resolving uh, compared to the Hi-Fi-Man HE-1000 V2. Now, I, again, I haven't heard the HE-1000 V2 stealth. That's still on my radar to do an evaluation of and compare. But I find the HE-1000 V2 to still be another sort of level up for the, the, the fine gradations of volume, the trailing ends of tones, those types of things. It is also bright. The, the, the HE-1000 V2 is also bright, but I find it to be a bit smoother, more balanced, and just a bit more cohesive. Let's just say that. Uh, for that sense of impact and physicality, again, these don't really have it, but that bass feature is noticeable, uh, making it a little bit uh, more engaging, I, I think. Uh, and then for instrument separation and all of the things that planers often do well at, it's just fantastic. So you can go into this sort of expecting this to be very similar to, you know, Arias of the past, just with a couple of different features in there. And the strengths that those ones have, it's here as well. And I think that's very good. No, it does not compete with the half MS Vara for some of these qualities. And it also doesn't compete with the HE6, the original, for that sort of sense of engagement. But... You know, for people who liked this style of headphone, um, it's just more of that, essentially. Um, and I think if you have a previous Aria, I don't think it's something you need to upgrade to. But if you don't have a previous Aria, this is worth consideration, I think. But that's really how I see it. I, I don't think this is any crazy revolutionary headphone. This is not anything crazy new compared to the Aria Stealth or some of the other Arias that have existed in the past. It's just a slightly different uh, characterization that it has. At the moment, um, for some of the subjective qualities, I actually do think that this is better than what you get with the Odyssey MM500, but the MM500's tuning is a little bit more palatable for me for a wider range of stuff. Um, I EQ both, right? So it, for me, it doesn't make a difference. But for people who don't EQ, I think that it is worth considering that. Um, just keep in mind that the MM500 is quite clampy. Uh, if you want a warmer sound signature in general, the LCD X uh, is another planar that's just a lot warmer, uh, particularly for the upper mids. So uh, do I recommend this headphone? Yes, I do recommend it specifically if you are looking for something a bit brighter. If you are listening to jazz, acoustic, and classical, absolutely. Some people just, they love that extra air that these types of headphones have. If you're an older listener, also absolutely, I recommend it. But if you're listening to more aggressive, intense, upbeat, or otherwise, you know, fatiguing music like rock and metal, uh, I recommend looking at something that is maybe a little bit less bright than this. If you are a younger listener, then this may also be a bit of a, a challenge. And if you just don't like bright headphones in general, then I'm not gonna recommend this one for you either. So for the price here, um, the Aria versions have actually come down in price quite a bit in comparison to other headphones, you know, that have similar sound signatures. Like again, think of like the HD100S for example, um, that's still quite a bit more expensive. One of these would be what I would get at around $1,000 or $1,300 in this case. Uh, and then I would probably just do a little bit of EQ. But yeah, I do think this is competitive. I do think it's very good. I just, it's just bright. <laughs> that's, that's, that's basically all there is to it. Um, anyways, that's gonna do it for this video. Once again, if you're interested in any of our written material, that's up on headphones.com in the audio file section there. If you wanna see the measurements of this, there's a link posted in the description with all of that. Uh, and then also uh, you can chat with me on our Discord, also linked below. That's where you can tell me that I'm wrong about this and how this is the greatest thing of all time and that the hype should be real. Oh, and just one more thing. We now have merch up on headphones.com. Check that out. Uh, you can find this uh, wonderful Tangle T t-shirt. There's also a mug that people seem to like. I uh, can't imagine why. That does it for me in this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.